Welcome to Math 8 class. Enjoy learning watching this video. Find the possible factors of the given number or expressions below. Choose your answers from the puzzle to find the pieces of my life. So take note, that's not only my life but yours too. So this is the number or expressions and this is the factors. Let's have the number 1. What are the factors of 8? That's 2 and 4. Number 2, 2x. What are the factors? 2 and x. Number 3, 25. What are the factors? 5 and 5. Number 4, 12z. What are the factors? 4, 3, and z. Or we can say another factor is 6, 2, and z. Number 5. 20xy. What are the factors? 5, 4, x, and y. Order 1, Module 1a. Factoring polynomials. Lesson 1, Factoring with Common Monomial Factor. And we have the Lesson 2 and Lesson 3. We will discuss it later. You and I have a lot in common. This is the garden. A garden is a rectangular with a width of 2 feet and a length of x plus 3 feet. Find the area of the garden. To find the area of the garden, we must know first the shape. And the area of the garden which is rectangular has a formula of area equals length times width. And the length is x plus 3 and width is 2. Now, to find the answer, we must use the distributive property. 2 times x and 2 times 3. So the answer is 2x plus 6. The first question is, is the area of the rectangle a polynomial? Yes. Number 2. What is the relationship between the area of the rectangle and its side? Area is the product of two sides. Number 3. What can you say about the width of rectangle comparing it to the area? A width is a factor of the product of the area. Number 4. What do you call the process of rewriting the polynomial as a product of polynomial factors? Factoring. We use the distributive property here when we get this answer. Now, 2x plus 6 can be written as 2 times x plus 2 times 3. And this two is common. And we can say that is the GCF or the greatest common factor. Two is the GCF and x plus three is the other factor. This is the factoring with common monomial factor. And we're going to explore it in the next slide. Let's explore. But before we explore it, let's read this. The elevator to success is out of order. You have to use the stairs one step at a time, according to Joe Girard. Now we're going to discuss the step of the factoring of common monomial factor. The step one, determine the number of terms. Step two, determine the GCF or the greatest common factor of the numerical coefficient and variables. Step 3. Find the other factor by dividing each term of the polynomial in the original given by the GCF. Step 4. Write the complete factored form. Let's have the example. 
write 6x plus 3x squared in factored form. Step 1. Let's determine the number of terms. 6x, the first term, and 3x squared, the second term. Step 2. Determine the GCF. But according for this one, we have to give all the factors. The factors of 6x are 1, 2, 3, 6x. The factor of 3x squared, 1, 3x, x. Now, the common partner or the factor, I just use the, the literal one. 3 and x. So, these are the GCF. 3x. Now, we go to the step 3. 6x plus 3x squared. We're going to divide it by what? GCF. 3x, and this is also the 3x. 6x divided by 3x. Now, focus first in the numerical coefficient. 6 divided by 3 is 2. For the variables, x divided by x. For dividing the variables, we have to subtract the exponent. And we have the imaginary 1 here. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So x raised to 0 according to the law of the exponent, that is 1. So the answer is 2. Where do we get the 2 again? 6 divided by 3. And here, we have the 1 answer here. 2 times 1 is 2. Now let's go to this one. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Then x squared divided by x raised to 1. 2 minus 1, which is the exponent, that is x raised to 1. Or we can say x. So that's plus x. So this is the other factor. And this is the GCF. We're going to combine it in step 4 to write the complete factor form. So 3x times 2 plus x. Example number 2. Write 12x cubed y fifth minus 12t x fifth y squared c in complete factor form. Step 1. Determine the terms. 12x cubed y fifth, 20x fifth y squared z. Step to find the GCF. But we do first all the factoring. So these are the factoring of 12x cubed y fifth. And from the 20x fifth y squared z, that are the factoring. Now let's find the common factor. So I will not uh, circle the 4 because it's automatic C that the 4 is the GCF. Now focus in the variables. This is the variables, which is the GCF. Okay, the GCF together with the numerical coefficient is 4x cubed y squared. Step 3. We're going to divide it to the GCF. Okay. Now here, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Again, in dividing the variables, div uh, subtract the exponent. So that's 0. So x raised to 0 according to the law of exponent. That is 1. Then here, 5 minus 2 is 3. So we have the y raised to 3 here, or y cube. So the answer here is 3y cube. Then here, 20 divided by 4 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. We subtract the exponent. Then 2 minus 2 is 0. Then z divided by 1 is a. So the answer here is negative 5x squared z. 
So for step 4, we write as a complete factored form to get the GCF and the other factor. Now, let's take it easy. So I'm going to uh, show you the step 1 to 4, but here in take it easy, that is shortcut. Now take a look for the 12. So we're going to use the factoring um, like within multiplication. For 12, we have 4 times 3, 6 times 2, and 12 times 1. For 20, we have 4 times 5, 10 times 2, 20 times 1. Those are the possible, which is factoring of 20 and 12. Now let's examine or observe what is the GCF. So the greatest common factor. Of course, that is the 4. But have the factoring of 4 times 3 and 4 times 5. Now, let's go to the variables. To find the GCF of the variables, we must know first that all terms have these variables. And let's take a look at the lowest exponent. The lowest exponent here for the x is x cubed. And for the y is y squared. We cannot get the GCF z because there is no z in the first term. So we have only x and y. So the GCF is 4x cubed y squared. So just like the step 2. Now, to find the answer directly, together with the step 3 and step 4, just take a look at this one. Write the complete factor form. First, write the GCF. Okay. And then, to write the GCF here, take a look for the first one. The together of the GCF is 3. That's the other factor. So let's write the 3 here. And then, to get the variables, we have to make sure to follow the step 3. Again, to follow the step 3, the variables must subtract. For that, the exponent only is will subtract. So x cubed and x cubed here, when we subtract, that is 0. Again, we subtract only the exponent, but that is dividing the variables. Okay, that is 1. And y squared and y fifth. y fifth and y squared is, then we subtract the exponent, that is 3. So the answer is 3y cubed. Then for the other one, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and x fifth divided by x cubed, again, subtract the exponent, that is x raised to 2. Then y squared, y squared, subtract the exponent, that's 0, is equivalent to 1. Then z divided by 1 is z. So the answer is negative 5x squared z. So this is in complete factored form. Now, do you understand that this is only a shortcut? But we use the step 1 to step 4. Let's have the number 3. Write 12x cubed negative 18xy plus 24x in complete factored form. For 12, 4 times 3, 6 times 2, 12 times 1. For 18, we have 6 times 3, 9 times 2, 18 times 1. For 24, we have 8 times 3, 6 times 4, 12 times 2, or 24 times 1. Now let's get the GCF. And the GCF for the numerical coefficient is 6. Now let's take a look for the variables. To get the variables, which is the GCF, for first term we have the x, and second term we have the x, and for the last term we have the x. So therefore, we need to choose the lowest exponent. So that is x raised to 1. And for y, there is no GCF for y because there is no in the first term and 
also in the last term. So it means the GCF is 6x. Now let's write the 6x there and divide. 12x cubed divided by 6x, we have 2x squared. Again, subtract the exponent. So that's why we have 2 here. Then for the second term, or the middle term, 18xy divided by 6x is negative 3y. And for 24x, that is positive 4. So that is the answer. Let's have the number 4. 28x cubed z squared negative 14x squared y cubed plus 36yz squared. Let's get first the factor. Then choose the GCF. The GCF is 2. Now take a look at the variables. We have the x here, we have the x here, but there's no x in the last term. So x is not the GCF. So how about the z? The z is only for the first term, but here in the second term is no. And here the last term. So it must be in all terms. So not include the z. How about the y? So y, there is no y in the first term. So therefore, in the variables, there is no GCF. Only in numerical coefficients. So the GCF here is 2. Then write the 2 here, then divide to get the other factor. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Then copy x cubed z squared. Then for the next one, the terms of middle term, 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Then copy x squared y cubed. 36 divided by 2, that is positive 18. Then copy y z fourth. So that's the answer. Number 5, 12m fifth n squared minus 6m squared n cubed plus 3mn. So let's use first uh, numerical. 4 times 3, 6 times 2, 12 times 1, 4, 6, 3 times 2, 6 times 1, and 4, 3, 3 times 1 only. Now let's get the GCF. That is 3. Okay, like sum in the variables again, m, n, m, all right, so we're going to get the GCF that is the lowest exponent, so that is n. For n, n squared, n cubed, and n, the lowest exponent is the n, raised to 1. So this is the GCF of the variables. We have 3 m, n. Okay, so just right here. Then divide for step 3. 12 divided by 3 and m fifth divided by m. Again, dividing this, the variables is subtract exponent. 5 minus 1 is 4. Then n squared divided by n, 2 minus 1 is 1. So therefore, we have the answer of 4m raised to 4 n. Then second term, negative 2 m n squared. Again, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Then m squared divided by m is 2 minus 1. That is the exponent. This m only or raised to 1. n cubed minus n raised to 1. That's n raised to 2. And the last one is 1 because we go to divide it with the same um, numerical coefficient and variables. So just write 1. Did you get it or now? Okay, so would you tell me the summary of how to do the factors of common monomial? Again, the first one, step 1, determine the terms. The second one, that is... Find the GCF. Third, divide the GCF to the original equation or given. Okay, and the last one is write in complete factored form. All right, let's go to the next slide. 
Now, we use the timer. Now, it's your turn. So, determine the greatest common monomial factor of each polynomial and write its factor form. Number 1. What is a GCMF or the greatest common factor of x squared plus 2x? So, Alright, so that's it. So the answer is x. Number 2. Okay, what is the factor of form of x squared plus x? That is x times x plus 2, or x and x plus 2. Okay, number 3, what is the GCMF of 5x squared negative 10x cubed? Timer, please. Okay, so the answer is 5x squared. Number 4, what is the factored form of 5x squared negative 10x cubed? The answer is 5x squared and 1 minus 2x. Last number, 5, what is the factored form of 25x squared y cubed? Plus 55x y cube. The answer is 5x cube and 5x plus 11. All right, now, great job. Let's go to the next lessons. Let's do a factoring difference of two squares. This is very easy. Now let's go on. Find the perfect one. Determine which of the following is a perfect square. Write P if it is a perfect square and N if it is not. Number 1, 16. That is perfect. Number 2, 12. And it's not perfect. 3, 25. Perfect. Number 4, 8x squared. Not perfect. 5, 36y fourth. Perfect. Okay, so questions. Number 1. Which items are perfect squares? Would you identify it? 16, 25, 36y fourth. Number 2. Which items are not perfect squares? 12, 8x squared. Number 3. What did you do to, ter to determine whether the numbers are perfect squares? Find the factor. Alright, let's go on. Let us remember the past with gratitude, leave the presence with enthusiasm, and look forward to the future with confidence, according to Pope John Paul II. So now we're going to take a look at the past. Does recall foil method? X plus 1 with X minus 7. Now to recall the foil method, foil is means first term, outer, inner, and last term. This is the first term x times x is x squared outer term x times negative 1 negative x inner term 1 times x is x last term 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 now we can write as x squared negative x plus x negative 1 but as you can see, the negative x plus x here can be canceled, or we can say zero.
So the final answer is x squared negative 1. Another one, x plus 4 and x minus 4. First term, x squared. Outer term, negative 4x. And for the inner term, positive 4x. And the last term, negative 16. You can write as x squared negative 4x plus 4x negative 16. Because as you can see here, this is the same but different sign. We're going to cancel out. So the answer is x squared negative 16. Now how did you get the product of sum and difference of two terms? By using the FOIL method. Okay, multiplying binomial is a FOIL method. Have you observed any pattern? Yes. The product of two terms are perfect and the sign is negative. When the sign in the given is positive and negative. Now, for x squared negative 1, we can write as x plus 1, x minus 1. As you can see, there is a pattern here. For 1, which is the perfect number, the answer here is 1 and negative 1. Then for x squared, perfect again is x and x. But the sign here is positive and negative. This is called the sum and difference of two terms. But here in the lesson number two, that is the difference of two squares. That is same. Now let's go on to the next slide. Perfect square. These are the perfect. 16, that is 4 times 4, or can be written as 4 raised to 2. X squared x times x or can be written as x raised to 2. 25a raised to 4 can be written as 5a squared times 5a squared or 5a squared then we have the exponent outside of that is 2. So that is the power rule. Now this is the pattern a squared negative b squared can be written as a plus b a minus b. Step 1. Express the first and the second terms in exponential form with a power of 2. Step 2. Subtract the two terms in exponential form following the pattern a squared negative b squared. Step 3. Factor completely following the pattern a squared negative b squared equals to a plus b a minus b. Example number 1. Write x squared negative 9 in completely factored form. Step 1, x squared negative 9 can be written in x raised to 2, then 3 raised to 2. Then we have x raised to 2 minus 3 raised to 2. In step 2, we follow it, the step 2. And then for step 3, x plus 3, x minus 3. So that's very easy. Example number 2, 16a6 minus 25p squared. We can be write as 4a cubed raised to 2 and 5b squared raised to 2. Now, just do the step 2. You have to subtract, write the subtractions. Or we can say that is a direct to the answer. 4a cubed plus 5b and another one 4a cubed minus 5b. Number 3, a squared b fourth minus a b1. Write again, a b squared raised to 2, 9 raised to 2. Then just write the subtractions and write in complete factored form, a b squared plus 9, a b squared minus 9. Number 4, write x to the fourth minus a to 1. x squared raised to 2, 9 raised to 2, then write in subtraction, and then write in the positive and negative or sum and difference, 
x squared plus 9, x squared negative 9. Then for number 5, write 3, w squared, negative 48. So as you can see, the number 5, you cannot say that is cannot be factored. Why? Because you have to do first the step. Find the common monomial here, that is 3, and then we have w squared minus 16, and w, 6, w squared minus 16 is can be factored. And that is w squared minus 4 squared. Then we can write as the common monomial here, and then w plus 4, and w minus 4. So that's the answer. Now it's your turn. Direction, write your answer in completely factored form. Let's have the number 1. A squared, negative 81. Let's start the timer. It's only 10 seconds. Alright, so let's reveal the answer. Quantity A plus 9 and quantity A minus 9. Number 2. C squared minus 36. Okay, let's reveal. Quantity C plus 6, quantity C minus 6. Number 3, 25E squared minus 16. Let's start the timer. Okay, so let's reveal the answer. Quantity 5e plus 4, quantity 5e minus 4. Number 4, r squared plus 9s. Let's start the timer. Alright, so let's reveal. Cannot be factored. So why is it cannot be factored? Because aside for the signs of negative of positive, it must be negative. Uh, this one must be negative and then without S. Okay, let's go on number five. Let's start the timer. Okay, let's reveal. The first one, we need to get first the common factor. Or the GCF, the greatest common factor, that's 3. And it becomes x fourth, negative 4, y raised to the 6th power. Then, factor it out. So, we have 3, quantity x squared plus 2y cubed. And quantity x squared negative 2y cubed. So, that's the answer. Lesson 3, Factoring the Sum and Difference of Two Cubes Knowledge is power, knowledge shared is power multiplied. So we must know the perfect cubes. Perfect cubes are numbers or expressions that can be expressed to the power of 3. 8x raised to 6. 8 can be written 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 cubed. x raised to 6. x squared times x squared times x squared, or x squared raised to 3. This is the law of exponent. In grade 7, we learned the lessons am raised to n, or a raised to m times n, or the power of rule. So this is the power of rule. 8x raised to 6 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 raised to 3. x squared times x squared times x squared, or x squared raised to 3. Or 2x squared raised to 3. Let's have the power of 3. 
express the following in an exponential form with a power of 3. Let's have the number 1, 27. So 3 times 3 times 3 or 3 raised to 3 or quantity 3 raised to 3. Number 2, 1 over 8. 1 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 or we can write 1 raised to 3 over 2 raised to 3. Number 3, 64y cubed. So we have 4 times 4 times 4 and y times y times y. Or we can write as 4y cubed or quantity 4y cubed. Number 4, 125 x cubed. 5 times 5 times 5 times x times x times x. Or we can write quantity 5x cubed. Number 5. 27x raised to 6, y 12. So 3 times 3 times 3, x squared times x squared times x squared, then y fourth times y fourth times y fourth. Or we can write as quantity 3x squared y fourth to the third power. This is the pattern a cubed minus b cubed equals quantity a minus b, quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared. Then take a look at the circle 1. When you use the difference of two cubes here, that is the opposite of the middle term here. Same with this one, a cubed plus b cubed equals Quantity A plus B, quantity A squared, negative AB plus B squared. Then the circle is the negative, that's the opposite here. Let's have the example number one. Y cubed plus one. Y cubed can be written as Y times Y times Y. Then for one, that is one times one times one. Then we need to get the single only. Y and one. So that is y plus 1. Then let's take a look for the middle term first. y times 1 is y. So that is the middle term for this one. Now to get the first term here, you can write as y squared and here 1 squared. To finalize the answer here, we must um, multiply the y times y and 1 times 1. So the answer here is this. Quantity y plus 1, quantity y squared negative y plus 1. Let's have the example number 2. Factor x cubed negative 27. So quantity x raised to 3 minus quantity 3 raised to 3. For this, we have x times x times x. For 3, 3 times 3 times 3. Now, get first the single. That's x and 3. So x minus 3. For the middle term, we have, multiply this. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. But the opposite here is positive 3x here. Now, to get the first term here, and for the 3 is this one. But, the final answer here is quantity x minus 3, then quantity x squared, plus 3x, then 3 times 3 is 9. This is the pattern a cubed minus b cubed equals quantity a minus b, quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared, and another one a cubed plus b cubed equals quantity a plus b, quantity a squared negative ab plus b squared. Now, for number 3, we have factor y cubed minus 27. And then we write as the power of cubes. Then this is y times y times y. You can write this. And then get the single only. That's y and 3. So we write y minus 3 there. And for the middle term, we have negative 3y. Just multiply negative 3 times y. And for the opposite here, that is positive 3y. y squared here is here. 
why there are two y so y squared then three and three this three squared now to finalize the answer you have to copy this and then y times y is y squared then copy three y and then three times two is nine next number four factor eight x cubed negative 64 then this one and for four you have three and then get the single and then right here quantity 2x minus 4 and therefore the middle term negative 8x then opposite positive 8x then we have to copy and then write the x squared there is as exponent then 4 squared therefore finalize the answer you have to multiply 2x times 2x 4x squared then 4 times 4 is 16 so that's the answer. Example number five, factor 27m raised to fourth, negative 8m and raised to six. Now, let's get the common factor, the GCF, which is m. Then inside the quantity is 27m cubed minus 8m raised to six. Then we're going to factor this becomes 3m raised to 3, the negative 2n squared raised to 3. And just write this as this one, 3 times 3 times 3m times n times m. And here, 2 times 2 times 2n squared, n squared, n squared. Then let's get the uh, first factor, which is the single. Then write it there 3m minus 2n squared just write and include the m which is the gcf or the common monomial factor now here uh, find the middle term negative 2n squared times 3m is negative 6m n squared and this is the opposite of the middle of the second factor here then 3m squared that is quantity 3m squared here. And then for the last term, 2 and n squared is quantity 2n squared. Then we have the squared outside. Next, for the last answer, we have to make sure that this 3m squared is, is finalized. So 3m times 3m is 9m squared. And for this one, 2n squared times 2n squared is 4n raised to the fourth power. So this is the final answer. Now we have this. Now it's your turn. Cube to the left, cube to the right. For number one. Direction, factor the sum and difference of two cubes. So, let's have the number one, 8a cubed. So, let's use the timer. There's only um, 10 seconds. Alright, so let's reveal the answer. So, there's the answer. Quantity 2 plus a, quantity 4 minus 2a plus a squared. Number two, so let's make a timer, only 10 seconds. All right, so let's check and reveal the answer. Quantity 3b minus 4, quantity 9b squared plus 12b plus 16. All right, so let's go to the number three. Timer. All right, so let's reveal the answer. That's V, we had the GCF V, the quantity five plus V squared, quantity 25 minus 5v squared plus v raised to the fourth power. All right, so next, number four. 
Let's go to the timer. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, so let's reveal the answer. That is quantity 10 minus y, quantity 100 plus 10y plus y squared. So that is the final answer. Great job! So now we're going to do this one. So we have the group activity. We're going to create a game that applies factoring lesson. This is posted in your Google Classroom. And here your assignment also. And the deadline here is September 25. So that's too long. So I hope you can answer it well. And also the group activity. So the group activity, I show you there the groupings on Google Classroom. So see you next meeting. Bye-bye.